with um OKC though, because obviously you're mm. a big OKC OKC. KFC, okay, mate. Big KFC fan <laughs> over here. <laughs> oh, Watch that's me, right. Bro. Yeah. You're a big OKC fan. Um, of course, you guys had to go out and win the lottery, you know, because you don't have enough picks out there. You got pick number two now. Um, and realistically, you can't lose. There is not nah. a situation where OKC lose with that second round pick unless they take Jaden Ivey for some... Strange no, reason, no, which you wouldn't think would happen. So it begs me the question, who will OKC draft? How do you see this playing out? Like, And this also comes into it like, who's Orlando drafting in your mind? Because I thought there's no way Orlando don't take Chet right. He's the most, mm. uh, he's, the, he's the best. I wouldn't, I don't know if he's the best player in the class, but he's clearly got the best ceiling. I mean, could yeah, be an absolute oh, freak in the NBA. But Magic fans are really sold on Jabari Smith. Mm. And they love him. And it seems like the Magic are too. Do you see them taking Smith or Chet? And what do you see OKC taking if this plans out how you think it does? Um, oh, to be honest, for starters, I think we can eliminate Bancaro from the first two picks. I think mm. he's going to Houston. Um, unless if it unless was they trade me, it away, that's rumored as well. They're the only team that's like yeah. expressed interest in trading away their pick. Oh, I'd, I'd, if I was Houston, I'd still be happy with Bankero. He's obviously mm. um, very NBA ready, very good offensive skill set. Looks, looks the goods. Um, coming into the draft lottery, all I wanted was top three. I would be fine with any <laughs> of those three guys. I yeah. just didn't want to draft another guard. We need front court players. We don't necessarily need a centre, but it's just front court players in general. I personally want Jabari Smith, but it really is up to the magic. Wow. Yeah. That is a wow. Bro, am I tripping out? Like Jabari Smith to me is a danger player, in my opinion. The reason I say he's a danger player is because that bloke is big. No Mm. homo. He is big. (laughs) That guy is a big dude, and he's very strong, very athletic. And, my God, I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying this. And, Jesus, come at me, Magic fans, if you don't come... Never mind. And be, I'm going to be careful. I don't know where that was there. going. No, that's going to be sus as hell, bro. This whole podcast is the sus episode. Don't come at me. Um, don't do that. Um, but when I watch Jabari Smith, I always, and I'm not saying he's anything like him, but I always get nervous now with these power forwards that are built and strong and look NBA ready ever since I watched Obi Toppin play. Because in college, mm. everyone's like, this dude can be straight into the NBA, this and that. He can shoot. He can. He's very good athletically, all this type of stuff. But then as soon as he got to the NBA, it was like, um, we've already seen what he can do. Then what's the next step, right? What is the next step that transforms him into the next, you know, a really good power forward in the league? Sometimes yeah. I always look at those big power forwards, not saying that I have the issue necessarily with Jabari Smith, but it is a concern that I, I do see sometimes. And I saw someone bring it up the other day. With the Magic, though, I, how much do you need to bring in a dude that's already NBA ready to come in and, you know, smash it up? Because there's a dude right there in Chet Holmgren who's, I think, ceiling is way higher. So what, why wouldn't you mm. take him, though? If his ceiling it's... is way higher... Yeah. Send on our bench, sus edition. I, it going, is very going sorry. live in the I'm next sorry. couple of days. I'm sorry. Nah, um, oh, personally, just um, I feel like Jabari with his skill set fits better with our current core. I've probably got too much of an attachment to players that aren't going to be there long, like a Darius Baisley or a Lou Dort or a <laughs> Poku. Oh, um, no. <laughs> but nah, I don't actually have hope for Poku. I'm not one of those people. No. Um, I just think. Oh, Smith with his size and obviously he's insanely offensively talented. The shooting is unbelievable. He's crazy. Within. He shot like, what did he shoot? 44% or something from three? Something ridiculous. Something, something crazy. That combined with being 6'10", wingspan, potential for the defense is mm. there, that sort of thing. And I I don't know. I just get, <laughs> I've watched Poku for two years. Too I think long. that's putting me off. I think that's putting me off Chet Holmgren because he's so skinny and 
the um, offensive potential is a little bit raw. Obviously not to the extent yeah. of Poku, but I, I'm, I'm just kind of put off those sorts of players. Somebody at home has got to agree with me, though. Why are the Magic looking to take Jabari Smith? If I was the Magic, I would take Chet Holmgren. If you look at their exactly. roster, they've got Jonathan Isaac. They've got Jonathan Power Isaac forward, coming yeah. back, and they've got Franz Wagner. Do they really need another need forward? Another forward. Is Mo Bamba, is, Mo Bamba is leaving, bro. He is leaving. Yeah. Why? Well, if they were taking Smith, they'd sort of have to commit to Bamba. Mm. And I hope people understand oh, where I'm coming cool. from here. I'm not comparing Jabari Smith necessarily to Obi Toppin. What I'm saying is people thought Obi Toppin was way better than maybe he actually was because he was super NBA ready. Mm. Jabari Smith is super, super NBA ready. And I don't want a team like Orlando to take Jabari Smith because they think he's NBA ready and he can jump in straight away and win them a crap ton of games. Right? I want them to take the guy who they think is going to eventually take them to being a potentially a championship contending team. And maybe if Jabari Smith is that guy, then good. But if they're taking him just because he can come in and maybe win an extra game, then I don't see it. That's why I think they should just take Holmgren is the guy, but... I don't I know. If you guys fall with Holmgren, I think they'll be ready, though. You think he is? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think Van Gerwen is the most NBA ready because um, he's, he's another big guy. Polished offensively and he's fucking built. He so, is, um, yeah. yeah, no, I, I genuinely, at the end of the day, like I have a preference with Jabari, but I couldn't care less either of those three and I'm, I'm Would be happy. good. Mm. Well, Paolo, his um, interior defense is like through the roof. Like yeah. a six foot ten, he is really good at getting back and helping out his big man. So honestly, I, could, I, could I definitely see it. I trust Presty so much; he could take Jalen Duran, and I'd back him. Does I hold on? Have you have, did you see my video on Jalen Duran to the to the Thunder? No, nah, I don't think I've seen that one. I said the Thunder should trade up to get him. I th- I don't think you'll get him at twelve because the Spurs will probably go for him at nine. But All if I was you guys, I'd, I'd really Mark go Williams. for him. Yeah, and he's a big pro, bro. He's projected first round because there's not a whole lot of centers, but yeah, he's one of those guys that don't I don't know him. if he'll play a whole lot. Nah, I don't. I see a bit of danger in a team taking him high just because they need a big man. Like, especially mm. Charlotte at 13. Like, I think they probably will take him and I'd, I'd probably have them taking him, but it is a mm. big danger to me. But Jalen Duran, dude, he got compared to Dwight Howard. Like, he literally mm. got compared to a young Dwight Howard. He is legit. On God, he's probably my favorite player in the draft. I think he is, could be really, really good. And if the Thunder come out of it with, like, Jabari Smith and Jalen Duran, that mm. five players that you've got there and you're starting five is, like, legit. Like, that is fun to watch. Well, I'll, uh, I'll back you on the on the draft takes because you had the Scotty Barnes thing last year that went pretty I well did. for you. Do you want to so, uh, tell people what I said about Scotty Barnes for anyone uh, who was um, banging um. on for so long about how the Raptors were going to take Scotty Barnes and how bad Jalen Suggs was? I don't think Jalen Suggs is that bad. I think he's still got room to be a good player, but uh, this man was all up on the uh, Scotty Barnes hype train <laughs> long before it happened. And this was, uh, <laughs> this was last year when he was projected to go to OKC at six. And I really like I got hyped for Scotty Barnes. And then all of a sudden Toronto takes him. I'm like, who the hell are we going to take now? And we ended up with Giddy. So I'm pretty happy with that. But uh, yeah. yeah, it was a bit of a shocker. I did, I did say that too, that I thought Suggs was going to be a bit of a And he was, he was the, the most disappointing guy. I did, yeah, I did say he'd be an issue. People didn't believe NBA me. NBA ready again. Another dude that exactly was said yeah. to be NBA ready. I had the issue with him and I said, this Scotty Barnes kid, you watch. Cavaliers mm-hmm. will look at him at three, which we did. We looked at him at three. And I said, Raptors, mm. don't be surprised if they... And that was when the Siakam trade rumors were going on. I was thinking, yeah. Siakam's getting reported to be getting traded. You watch this. They'll roll with Barnes. And they ended up actually doing it. I was so happy in myself. I gave myself a <laughs> pat on the back. It was like the time <laughs> I, I said that. Western Bulldogs wouldn't make the eight after winning the flag. And everyone looked at me like I was retarded. Yeah. That's another I, call I, I got I right. was, I thought I was making a big call for saying they wouldn't make the top four that year, let alone the top eight. Yeah, I, I said top eight they wouldn't make because I never was on the doggies hype train that year in the AFL. I mm. thought it was such a flute premiership and I ended up being so right. <laughs> so yeah. right on so many levels. But yeah, so 
OKC is saying it's basically just whoever kind of gets to them at that pick, really. Through the wastelands, through the house.